In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know so that you can change your toilet and install a new one, even if you're changing the height of your floor. Stay tuned. All right, guys, one of the most important things you need to learn about managing your house is managing the water, specifically with your toilet. There are at least, well, there's at least one toilet for every person living in North America, right? We're toilet crazy. We've got them at home. We've got them at work. We've got them where we eat. We've got them where we play. Got them in the park. Bottom line is there's uh, about a billion toilets <laughs> floating around North America. And on a regular basis, they need to be removed and changed. The sizes change, styles change. You used to have like huge tanks, right? Be enough water in there to fill a swimming pool. But now we're getting really low flow and trying to conserve. So everybody's updating toilets. We're going to go through the process for doing this. First thing you got to do is shut off the water supply in the back. I am lucky because I have a 90 degree turn shut off valve and then remove these things. These things are brutal. A lot of times people try to move their toilet and then they want to reinstall it later because they're doing a renovation. And if you don't manage this, it breaks really easily. So you got to put it somewhere safe. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> now that the water's off, you got to empty the sucker. All right. Empty out the back. Now this is called the tank and this is a one piece toilet. So we don't have any risk of leakage here, but if it's a two piece, especially make sure that you've emptied out the back and you've checked to make sure that the two screws and bolts that are there are tight and nothing's wiggling around. Okay. Managing your water here is really the key. If you don't manage the water that's in the toilet when you move it, because it is a pee trap. If you look at an old toilet, you'll see the pipe come down and up. Okay. There's a big snake here and the water actually sits in the bowl all the way down and all the way back up again until it spills over the top to go down to the through the floor. And so that's the pee trap here, just like underneath the sink. If you leave all that water in there, as you move, it splashes over the top wall. Okay. And it ends up all over your floor. So what I got a system here to help you do this. So you're not going to run into trouble. First of all, get a pail of water because it's a pee trap. If I pour a large volume of water down at a quick time, creates a vacuum and it'll suck all the water out of that P-trap almost to the very end. Check this out. So the water level used to be here. Now it's down here. So that means that on the back side of that P-trap that's in here, I've got a few inches to play with. That's enough for me to manage. You no need to go grab a vacuum and shove your vacuum in a toilet and get it full of bacteria. God, just do that. And then follow the following process. You want to disengage your water supply from your shutoff valve. A couple of turns, it should be just finger tight. Now you're going to get a dribble here. Don't panic. It's just a little bit of water in that hose. Okay. Secondly, all toilets have some sort of connection system to the floor. In this case, there's this little cap and a screw and there's something on the floor that's attached to the floor inside the, the back of the toilet that that screws into. Okay. There's all kinds of systems out there now. Be careful and pay attention to which one you have. If you have a traditional toilet, it's just going to be the white caps with toilet bolts. You might even need a hacksaw to cut those bolts off, depending on the condition of the toilet. This toilet looks to be grouted and silicone to the floor. If you've never seen that before, consider it because the grout offers you a lot of stability. And the silicone gives you a great seal. Look at that. There we go. What do you mean it was grouted to the floor? What does that mean? Well, the toilet was installed and then grout was pushed into the groove. Into the, right. And then what it does is it gives it stability so it doesn't rock. It's very common when you're working on uneven surfaces. Mm -hmm. Because instead of using uh, silicone shims, you can just grout it in. Oh, yeah. Big deal. Come back the next day, a little bit of silicone, off you go. All right. Now she's ready to be released. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up. Matthew's going to bag it behind me and to take it out of the way. I like putting something like this straight into a shower pan. Unfortunately today, because we're using lights, we can't get to the shower pan. So we'll set it behind us. The reason for the bag is in case there's any water pouring, dripping out, we keep it contained. Okay. Now, uh, we're also going to get a chance to see the condition of the seal on this toilet. And we'll talk about that and we'll discuss options to so, make this work. Uh, we haven't done this in a little while. Yeah, this one's a difficult one because there's nothing to grab here. You're getting it up in the air. I have I'm nothing to grab here. Yeah. So I'm going to grab the back corner and the front edge okay. right here. And I'm just going to wrap it. Okay. Ready? All right. I'm trying to lift it up level. 
Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. And straight down? Yeah. All right. Uh, now, at this point, if you can just get more bag towards the back. Okay, I'm gonna rock it forward. Rock right, it forward a little bit. There we go. Okay, that's good. Now, slide that right over. Easy, 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 in case you... Yeah, okay. Well, that one worked really well. I like that system. So this particular toilet came with a whole flange nut and bolt system. Look at that. Who installed that? Look at that, not even a drip of water, no wax. There's a lot of options out here for doing this kind of work. So what I'm gonna do now is let's take this apart and we'll show you different options. So this is actually a pretty advanced toilet. It's uh, gonna be rather expensive to buy these, about four or 500 bucks. Here's the deal. Traditional toilets don't come with a uh, system like this, okay? For connection. That's where the screws went into, isn't that amazing? Let's get something back to what it looks like a little bit more traditional. Okay. So this particular toilet comes with installation instructions for this unit right here, and this one sits on the wax. All right. And it's just a really traditional wax ring. But the toilet itself is designed differently. Okay, so here we go. This is all special installation for that particular unit. This is traditionally what you're gonna find. So here's the wax ring that you would buy that I used in this situation, all right? And it is one inch thick, okay? And it gets compressed and it makes a really good seal. And you can see it is no longer one inch thick, all right? Now, the reason that it fits so well and it didn't leak anywhere is because the height of this flange versus the, the, the tile here. I'm a big believer in the idea of this. The top of your flange needs to be at bare minimum flush with your finished floor or a quarter of an inch higher, anywhere in that range, okay? Now on this particular floor, it has a slight slope. Look at this, almost flush at the back, okay? Full quarter of an inch higher than the floor in the front, all right? And that's why this works, because I use a regular wax. If it was lower, I would have bought this. Okay, this is the large version of the wax. Same product, one and a half times as thick. Okay, so if you have a toilet that's really flush with the floor, I wouldn't suggest going with the regular wax. Get the jumbo reinforced flange gat wax. Okay, get the jumbo, and that'll help make sure that you get good compression into the wax. Now. Let me just go through a couple of things here. When you pull this one out of the package, okay, the jumbo wax, there is a possibility that you can screw this up. If you have a good gap here, if you have a nice gap here and you get the jumbo wax, you have the potential of doing something like this. You're gonna go like this, you're gonna drop your wax in place, right? You're gonna line up your bolts, you're gonna go to set the toilet in. If when you go to set the toilet in, you're not all the way where you want to be, so you're going straight down on it, okay? You're not going to get good compression. What possibly could happen is you could start here, and then you might start moving backwards, okay? And you get in a position. You think, oh, great, I got a good seal. What you've done is you've collapsed your hole, okay? And you end up going to do the demonstration here. I've seen this before many times. We'll get a call from a customer and they're like, this is back in the days when I worked warranty for a renovation company. And I'd open up the toilet and I'd see something like this. All right. Instead of a nice big three inch hole, they got this. All right. That looks like the size of a drain for the sink. You're going to run into trouble. So you don't want to be forcing the wax back or sliding it left and right. When you drop your toilet on, you want to be over top of it go straight down. If that means you need two or three people to help you, then get them, okay? But you've got to make sure you go straight down onto your wax to avoid that trouble. All right, garbage. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna set this aside because I'm gonna use this one later to reinstall this toilet. Let me just go through a couple of other options. You all might have seen this before, and I use this on a toilet in my, 
uh, a bathroom video max in my my former house downstairs. Oh, no, yeah. And downstairs we had um, oh this this place. The floor downstairs is over a crawl space, and the crawl space is really short, and it's old school 1880 construction, so the floor has a lot of movement. And so what we did down there to solve our toilet problem is I had a, the toilet flange sitting on the plywood, and then we had flooring, and because of the height of the flooring, I had to add some beef to it. We put in this rubber gasket here, okay, and it goes over the holes. And this rubber gasket replaces the need for wax, okay? So then what happens is the toilet sits on this, and as the house moves and breathes, so does the gasket. See that? So if the toilet is moving around in position all year round with different seasons, the gasket maintains contact with the toilet and you have a good seal. Wax doesn't do that. Once wax is pushed and collapsed, it does not spring back in place. So if you have an older house, or you're on a crawl space and you get weird weather, having a foam gasket like this might be a good solution for you. This was available at Home Depot. If you want to search it out, we'll put the, uh, uh, I'll put a link. I think it might be available on Amazon. Closet flange extension. Okay. And it also comes with a flange extender. Now this ring is going to be for a good for this situation. Here, check this out. We are adding new flooring. Now look what happens. All of a sudden the flange is lower than my finished floor. Okay. You don't want that. Because if I put this on here with that lower than that, my toilet's not even going to make contact with that flange. Okay? That's a serious problem. Make sure you've always got that at least flush or a quarter inch higher. So what they do is they sell this little extension kit. Okay? Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Now we set this up so your bolts are, when you're looking at it like a clock face, you're at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Nice and square and level. Don't go like this, or the toilet might have a potential to, to pop right out of the holes, okay? Now you're high enough. That might even be a little bit too high, okay? But what you want to do is you want to screw these four corners right into the existing ABS drain system, okay? So I have ABS drain. You might be on a CPVC. If it's on cast, you can't use this. You can't use this extender on cast, okay? They have a different one, and <laughs> that's a whole new world. Most people in the world were not on cast plumbing anymore. <laughs> because extended toilet bolt kits as well, because when you start building up your toilet kit, you might not have bolts long enough to get above the new toilet when you start stacking all this together, right? So all three of these things work together to get an extension and a seal. Let me get these out of the damn way. Okay, there we go. Extension, seal, and in between this, is a gasket under compression and it seals everything, okay? That's why we're screwing it down to create compression. Don't use silicone. I've seen so many plumbers use silicone and throw on a Teflon ring. It's lazy. It's wrong. It always leaks. Anywhere where you have water sitting, silicone will give out. And eventually, because a toilet should sit there for the lifetime of the, of the room. We don't reinstall them every year to get a fresh seal. But if you have any silicone in that assembly, Water will get underneath and between that silicone and it'll start working its way out onto your subfloor, rot out your subfloor. And when your subfloor starts to rot around your toilet, all your screws are in rotting wood. And so the wood swells and then everything starts to get loose and then your toilet starts to wiggle. And as your toilet wiggles, the wax starts to open up worse and worse and worse. Next thing you know, the wax is broken, the water's all around the toilet. <laughs> this is what happens. It can take five or 10 years. But so don't let somebody install a toilet incorrectly in your house because the warranty they're going to give you on that installation is 30 days to a year tops, right? But the damage they can cause by doing it wrong will bite you in the butt. Years down the road, you'll be sitting there going, geez, honey, there's a really weird dark stain on the ceiling. What's up with that? Somebody use silicone on your toilet. All right. Now, the next option is this product here. Okay. It's very similar. Now, this one comes, this one has two different thicknesses and rings, okay? So, this is my go-to. Anytime that I know I need an extension, but I'm not sure how big it's going to be because I haven't pulled the toilet off yet, I buy one of these, okay? There's two gaskets that come with it. There's an adhesive backing on it, okay? 
the adhesive backing is to apply to the underside of the ring. I'm going to set that up. Bam. All right. Now you're ready to go. Extension. All right. Now the reason I like this particular system is, like I said, it's got the screws, so I can screw in four corners. The other thing it has is this bolt system doesn't allow it to slide out. Okay, so you can put these in the right location, and then you stack it like this, and then you would screw it in, okay? Now, when you're going to go install your toilet, they have these clips. Check this out. Little plastic washers. It's kind of like a zip tie. Okay, and you can get your bolt standing straight up by using that zip tie. Remember what I said about setting your toilet straight down? If you use this system here, you can line this up perfectly. And as an individual, you can set that on. If you don't have those, these bolts can be all over the place, making contact with the toilet, and then you gotta lean and slide and try to, you need two people. But with this, it's a one person installation. Very common out there is the existing floor. If you're adding tile, then you know you have to get one and a quarter inch thick on your subfloor. So what we do is we don't move the flange, we add the plywood around it. We got a great video that we added the subfloor. Okay, if you're doing a project like that and you need to add subfloor thickness, we'll put a video link in the description. Or you can check the card if you get cards in your notification. The other thing is, when you go that thick on your tile, we take the, the seal. Okay, boom. Double stack this bad boy. Okay, good to go. Now when you do your screws, you screw through here. They're already lined up. Boom, boom, boom. All the way down into the ABS. Now you've got enough height difference here to add plywood and tile and still have a little bit sitting above your floor, okay? Guaranteed every time. If you're doing a tile job and you're going from um, just regular subfloor because you had a vinyl sheet floor, go back to the original 5 8 get that little quarter inch plywood out of there, grab one of these kits and double stack it, all right? And then you can install your toilet knowing that you're gonna have a great seal. And depending on the thickness, like I said, you can go with the regular wax if you are a little bit above your floor when you're finished, or you can go with the large wax when you're done, all right? One more thing. When you're doing your toilet day, make sure you pop by your local coffee shop, grab yourself a coffee. These are like wax-lined cups. Perfect every time. That'll stop the sewer gas from coming into the house while you're working. This information is really good for anybody who has CPVC or, or ABS plumbing, all right? Um, if you have cast, you can actually buy brass rings. If Sometimes the cast, you still have lead. The lead is a soft metal that's sticking up and you can actually just take a torch to it really lightly and then you can hammer it flat, okay? I know it's crazy. And then you can put your adhesive right over top of that and then bolt your toilet to the floor. There's a few other varying situations, but they also make a, uh, a flange insert that goes into that pipe and it's called twist and seal, all right? It's a white PVC, has a big three inch black gasket on it and the sides are tapered. The idea is you set it in place and you start spinning it. And the, the contact that the, the gasket has with the side of the pipe slowly starts to get compressed tighter and tighter and tighter as you thread it down. So if you have an old pipe and you don't have a flange and you've got nothing to attached to, that twist and seal will save your bacon, okay? So it is on the market. All of these things are available at your local building store. You don't have to go to a specialty supply store for this. That's the best part. When in doubt, if you have an issue, take a picture of what you're, you're dealing with, get a measurement of whatever your finish is from your floor, know your flooring assembly you're gonna be using, you can go to the hardware store and they'll help you get the right stuff, okay? They're at least competent enough to help you with that. Most plumbing departments at these stores, you've got someone who has enough competence to help you with your toys. Huh. And if you have other questions and you just can't seem to solve your problem, consider becoming a member on our channel. We've got a forum you can send pictures and ask questions there and we can help you out ourselves, okay? So in summary, let's just go through the, the major points here. One, don't ever use silicone. If you have to rely on silicone to seal your water, you're just delaying the damage that's inevitable. Number two, try to get flush to a quarter inch up, okay? If you're a quarter inch high, it's perfect. Regular wax is good. If you need to build it up, use a system that's designed for building it up. Don't get creative in your home and experiment, all right? And number three, always install your toilet straight down when you're finished, and you'll be just fine. Remember, one of the most common 
causes of water damage in the home is a leaking toilet. It's unbelievable. I've probably replaced in 500 toilets in my career. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, about 430 of them were installed wrong. So if you're watching this video, chances are yours is too. The way you can tell is if it moves side to side or front to back, you got a 95% chance that there's a leak going on right now. You might want to take it up and have a good look, okay? If you like that information and you think it saved your bacon, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we are in the middle of a massive bathroom remodel project. We're doing everything bought from the local building store so that you guys can do this project at home on your own, okay? It's going to be totally doable. Yes, you can remodel your bathroom and you can make a ton of money doing it. So now that we've got our flooring installed, let's take a look at the actual implementation of the solution here. We'll start off by going with a thick ring. Now, you're going to see that maybe that's allowable on the back because I have a sloped floor and a level fixture. Um, I'm way too thick at the front. So that's not going to be acceptable. Remember, this is going to be sitting on the floor. So. I can't have something that's causing this to be sitting too high off the ground, or that's just going to be a serious problem for me. Here we go. This is the thinner piece. Okay, I'm just above flush here, maybe an eighth, and I'm a quarter in front. I like that. We're going to go with it. You know, it's funny because, you know, most toilets don't have an elaborate system like this. And this has an integrated rubber gasket here that the toilet actually is going to stretch and have its own self-seal. And I'm using wax to seal this to my, my flange. Majority of toilet, toilets that are on the market today are basically, they're cheap. They don't have, you know, expensive flange options. There's a lot of different companies out there who sell four, six, eight hundred dollar toilets and they have really complex systems to manage the fact that it'll never leak. But the average person is getting a builder grade toilet or they're going to a box store to find a toilet to replace what they have now and they just don't sell quality there. So you have to contend with the fact that your installation has to be bloody perfect to protect yourself. You, there's just no mercy for you. <laughs> wow, that'd be nice if they weren't quite so aggressive. If when you put your flange on and you're over gaps or screws and you can't use the pre-drilled holes, don't worry about it, all right? Just reposition. I know this ain't sexy, but it's going to get done. Okay. Yeah, just because it works doesn't mean it's easy, eh? All right, now this is just nasty. I'm dealing with these wax rings. If you want, you can wear latex gloves if you can get a, even find them. Due to COVID, it's hard to get a hold of products like that at the hardware store nowadays. So, wear some clothes that you can rub your hands on and get rid of the wax. All right. Now that's in position. Next couple of steps have got to happen pretty darn quick here. All right. We do not want to be smelling our sewer system. Thank you, Timmy's, for your help. It's just wax, but you don't want to have too much buildup on the inside to make your hole smaller, right? All right, now here we go. It's amazing, eh? Now with most conventional toilets, all you do is you put the wax down, attach your screws, and drop your toilet right over top. With this system, I have to go grab a wrench now, but I gotta install this coupling. I gotta install this system over top and then tighten my screws. So you can see that the nut sits on top of these brass washers. When the washers start to bend, you're putting more pressure on that toilet than you need to, okay? That's your key, you don't know when to stop. If you wanna know how much pressure, as soon as this nut starts to bend that washer and so it's folding into the hole, 
Just stop. You've got enough pressure. You're not doing any more favor to yourself by going any tighter. All right, well, now I'm just going to drop the toilet in place and connect the water supply again. Cutting the bolts down because I don't want to have any interruption with setting that new one on top. Boom. And this particular toilet. What's that for? That's where this goes, okay? That's where the screw, the screw to set this in goes. So when you're gonna go set the toilet down, put the hole right in the middle of that tape and then set it down. I'll bend to the left, you go to the right. <laughs> I know it seems silly, but straight over. Okay, I'm good. Me too. There you go, right it just sits right in place. Put our little decorative cap on there. That looks pretty. Connect our water supply. <clears throat> Shut off valves. Always start with the finger tight. And when it gets stiff, you know you've made contact with the gasket that's in there, okay? Then you can take a pliers, give it another full turn, maybe a full turn and a half. Really gets good compression, okay? Check for leaks, we're good. And remember, whenever you're doing a remodeling project and you're adding new flooring, if your plumbing is coming through the floor, you don't have to cut it off and put on a new shutoff valve. Just work your flooring around that hole. Get yourself one of these. This is called a split pipe flange, okay? This will cover up the pipe and just snaps in place and you just set it there. Good to go. Perfect every time. Here we go, guys. Now listen, very careful when you put the <laughs> you don't want to, at the last moment when you have a full tank of water, crack the darn tank. Remember, we are remodeling this bathroom. It's a four piece, so we've got a shower, tub, new vanity, double sink instead of one. All these projects are in our new video series. You can click the link over here and follow from the beginning. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.